And welcome back to the JKR Podcast. Today we have former Indiana Bulls third baseman and 2023 Winthrop signee Easton Moore on the JKR Podcast for the Indiana Baseball Series. Easton, pumped to have you, pumped to have you on the show, man. How are you doing today? Good. Very pumped to be here today. Excited. Awesome. awesome. Great to hear, man. Uh, so first question before we dig into the Bulls, before we dig into Winthrop, before we dig into Zionsville Baseball, I got one question I like to ask everybody that gets on the JKR podcast, and that is, for those who don't know you, how would you introduce yourself? Who exactly is Easton Moore? Uh, Easton Moore, he's a, he's a fun guy. Um, he likes to bring the energy, especially on the ball field. He likes to mess around. Uh, maybe gets in trouble for it sometimes, but you know he knows when to when to get serious. But you know he's just a fun guy to be around. Likes okay. to likes to goof around. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead. Let's dig it. Let's start it off with Indiana Bulls. Kind of take us through, you know, just your travel baseball career. You know, when you guys started with the Bulls, like we talked about before we started recording. I know your dad, like you said, is the Bulls president. I know he's one of the top guys there. But just take us through your experience with the Bulls and kind of when you started playing for them. Yeah. So originally. When I was probably like four years old, I started traveling with the Bulls because my dad was coaching, I think, the 17U team. So I started off then. And then ever since then, I've been with the Bulls. From, from day one, I was just learning baseball, just from all the former Bulls players. And then I think uh, 9U was my first year, and then just up from there. And then my dad started being my head coach, I think, at 10U, and then all the way up to 15U. And then I started to have the other coaches. And then, yeah, it's just been a – Bulls is just the best organization around it. You know, it's been a huge part of my yeah. recruiting process and just where I am today. Of course. So going from your dad playing there for like 10 years to 15 years, playing there, playing for him for five years, what was mm -hmm. that like playing for him? And maybe with that comparison to switching from 16, 17, you maybe going and playing underneath a couple, a couple other different coaches. Just what was that experience like and kind of that comparison playing for your dad versus playing for somebody else? Uh, yeah. Playing with my dad. I mean, you can't get much better than that. It's awesome to play under your dad. Um, you get to, you know, he'll ask you about the lineup. He would ask me, what do you think I should do? You know, it's like I'm a assistant coach with him. But it was really fun. And then, you know, you go to the games. You get there early. We'd watch scout teams together. So it was like I was a little coach with him, and just playing under him was great. You know, I'd get some yelling, some yelled at sometimes from him. But it was a great time. And then moving 6, 15, I think 16, 17 you, um, it's just, you know, I had to get used to it because I've just been under my dad's wing my whole baseball career. But – it's good to, you know, it's important for me to be able to play under um, other coaches, especially now going into college and then high school. My uncle's the head coach for high school. So it's kind of, I've been under my family a lot. Yeah. So I had to get used to, you know, other people coaching me. Yeah. So 16, 17, you go not play for your dad. You know, what were some of those other relationships beyond your dad that you built with some of those Indiana Bulls coaches? Just, you know, a couple of who, the, who are a couple of those guys and just those relationships you built? Um, one of the coaches was Tony Cookerly. He's a, uh, We've he coached when my dad was on in white or black or whatever it may be. He coached the other team usually, so I already had a good relationship with him, and I played with his kid Alex Cookerly. So me and him were already pretty tight, so that was an easy just flow right into it. And I uh, played with Coach Bennell, a uh, Westfield coach, so I knew him a little bit just from prior seasons. But that one, you know, I just had to get to know him and stuff, and he was a huge part of my game. I feel like that year was when I made the biggest jump. I started out the year I was a little skinny little you know he was he had to get on me and get in the weight room or whatever and then last year was also actually yeah last year was also a uh Westfield coach coach Hanson Jake Hanson um he was probably the biggest coach in my recruiting process um tell me where what fits best for me um huge infield coach uh, I feel like that's where I made the next step in my infield you know um I think he played at Purdue and he was just one of the starter infielders when he was there yeah. so that was huge in my growth as a player so playing for the indiana bulls i know you mentioned westfield coaches i mean you're playing them in the spring also some of the, your teammates with the bulls i'm sure you're i'm sure there's probably every game that goes by you're playing you know one of your mm -hmm. former teammates what's that like in the springtime you know going from teammates you know, teammates with these guys to opponents you know facing your old coach facing some of your old teammates what's that kind of like and just can kind of take us through that going through those games uh yeah it's it's great to play your teammates you know on the field it's just like you know, they're your enemy for a little bit. But, um, you know, after the game, before the game, you get to talk to them. You know, my favorite part is when my teammates – I don't like when they get on when they're hitting, but let's say they get on second base and me and Josh Gervin, we just have a conversation with that second base and you just catch up. And I feel like that's one of my favorite parts about the game, just talking to so many different new people and then seeing my teammates 
who I played with in the past and catching up with them. Yeah. yeah. So you say your uncle is your coach for Zionsville. Your dad mm-hmm. you know, is part of the Bulls. I I see that last name more all over the place. I was actually looking at the Bulls roster yesterday. Are those cousins, brothers who are, are you got, you got more guys in the Bulls organization um, in your, in your family? Yeah. Uh, my brother is on the 14U black and then Jared's kid. Uh, my cousin is on the 14U white. So, you know, Big family at the Bulls. Yeah. Okay. So this is one question I always like to, whenever I get a guy from the Bulls, I always like to ask this question. I think for you being underneath your dad for so long, starting traveling when, when you were like four with him, you're going to know this question a little, bit more, a little bit better than the rest. So with you seeing the day to day, seeing the, seeing just go game, game by game with the Indiana Bulls, what do you think has led to that Indiana Bulls success to where they're at now? Um, well, Grand Park is obviously a huge part that brings in a bunch of players. But I'd say like all the behind the behind the scenes stuff that really the players don't really get to see just from my dad. You know, like every night he's on a call with the Bulls coach, let him know what they could do better. And there's just like the board, the board meetings, they decide, hey, let's do this different like, next year, whatever, whatever it may be. And I feel like most organizations probably aren't as tight like that. And I think every Sunday night they always have meetings. And I feel like there's just so much behind the scenes stuff with the Bulls that the players really don't understand, but it's just so big in their recruiting process or what team they may be on or their coaching. Yeah. And yeah, it's a huge part of the Bulls. So coming so coming from a family that has so much coaching background, after your baseball career comes to an end, do you see yourself get into the industry as well? Or do you kind of want to, you know, stay away from that? Um, I'm gonna play it by ear. You know, a few years ago I would have said yes. Now I'm so so. But I'm definitely I'll coach when I have kids, I'll coach them or whatever. But I'm still trying to figure out if I want to coach in college or if not, because I don't know. We'll just see where the connections okay. lead me. But okay. I've, I've definitely thought about it. You know, yeah. I love being around the game. So so looking back into it, you know, all the way back to when you were four years old, playing for the Bulls, playing for your dad, playing for some of those other coaches as well. If you could just think of, you know, maybe your favorite two to three memories that come to mind of the Indiana Bulls of travel baseball. Just what are a couple of those memories that come to mind? Uh, First is definitely Cooperstown. I mean, that was the most favorite tournament of all time you know living in the little dorms or whatever with your all your teammates that was pretty fun and then at that time you know hit hit some homers I think we had like 50 or 60 homers so I was just I mean that's just not what you get in any tournament uh so Cooperstown is definitely my favorite and then Grand Park I mean it's just 10 minutes 15 minutes away from my house always an easy drive it's chill it's Grand Park you can't get much better than it and then Lake Point Lake Point the vibes there are just they're just awesome uh the field's super nice. There's always a bunch of scouts. Great competition. So I feel like Grand Park, Lake Point, Cooperstown, my top three. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and transition to Zionsville baseball, you know, where you're a senior at now. Kind mm-hmm. of take us through, you know, these past couple of years, your freshman, sophomore, junior year, up to where you're at now. Kind of take us through your senior season as well. Just what has the Zionsville experience been like so far? Oh, it's been awesome. I feel like compared to most schools, we're kind of just laid back. We have fun. You know, the coaches, like, let us chirp, all that stuff. So it's just been laid back. And then, I mean, our team is just super tight. Um, there's really no issues ever with the team, um, which I feel like most schools, you probably get that here and there. But it's just a bunch of kids that just want to have fun and have respect for the game and want to play the game at a high level. Yeah. And I feel like that's led to so much of our success in the last few years. Yeah. So playing up there in Northern Indy, and obviously you have you guys, Fishers, Carmel, all those different schools that are sending guys to – play at that next level. What's that competition level like there, Northern Indianapolis, going through your guys' spring season? You know, just what's that look like on a game-to-game basis? I'm sure you guys are always facing the teams, number one or number two, obviously with you, with Nash, with all those – Gilly, who just committed to TCU, with all those guys in the lineup. I mean, I'm sure you guys are always facing the team's best. Just what is that? what does that competition level look like there in Northern Indy? Uh, it definitely makes the games more intense and more fun, and I feel like the biggest part of our – like signs of success is that competition and they going into the playoffs we're more ready than any other team because i feel like we don't really have an off game you know every game we play you're facing a dude throwing upper 80s 90 every conference game you're facing d1 com- any commits um i feel like i honestly think we might have the hardest schedule in like indiana every single game when we went down to tennessee we played like the top 10 team in illinois um and then garen for this week for example i know they only have like one loss you just no, no matter where we play, who we play, it's always a legit team with legit pitching. I feel like that's what sets us up at the next level. Yeah. Next. So, so with Zion's bill, you know, being so good, obviously you, they got Nash, Simon. I, I believe there's somebody else in that 24 class going to play D1. I uh, Mateo Wells. 
Mateo Wells. Yep, correct. Yep. Um, and then I mentioned Gilly as well. I know Drew Dixon was there last year. For you being around so many great ball players like yourself, you guys all have that same mindset. How do you kind of pick the brains of some of your teammates, whether that's Dixon, who's a little bit older than you, maybe Nash and Simon and Mateo, who are your younger. How do you pick their brains and just kind of see the way that they go about their business as well with you guys, you know, being that same caliber of ball player, having that same type of mindset? How do you kind of pick their brains? Uh, Yeah, so it's definitely just like knowing we're all really good, right? It's hard to, you know, you got to push each other. And I think that's also a great part about Zionsville. You know, we go to practice and we're doing live at bats off Nash. Chase Wagner is another one. Um, mm-hmm. Mateo, whatever it may be. And I feel like that's – you got to – you, you kind of get humbled. And I feel like that's a big part of just having a bunch of really good players around us. And then last year, like Drew Dixon, he was a really good leader. And I feel like we tried to bring his – his way of leadership and just picking guys up, you know, telling us, Hey, you can do better at this, there at that. And I feel like that's something that might start, you know, we've tried to do that a little bit this year, just picking guys up, just being positive and, you know, picking at them like, Hey, you can do better at this, you know, just let them know what's wrong. And I feel like that's something that people take for granted. Um, I feel like we do a good job of that. as yeah. well. So, so with Dixon, you know, going on, going to the Northwestern, you know, not playing for Zionsville this year, have mm-hmm. you stepped up as a leader, you know, being that senior in that locker room, kind of take us through, I mean, you mentioned you, you guys wanted to bring Dixon's leadership. Have you kind of stepped into that role or kind of what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I feel like I've tried to step into that role. Um, definitely. I've tried to just be positive this whole year. You know, it's my senior year. It's high school ball. You don't really need to worry about stats or your performance. You just want to win. And I feel like we have a good senior class in general. Everyone is just happy to be there. Um, we don't really have, like, there's no just negative Nellies in the senior class. Everyone's just having fun. It's a game. And everyone respects it. And I feel like everyone knows to look up to the seniors. We're just a bunch of good kids. And I feel like we just tried to uh, show the little kids, younger kids, you know, how it should be as a, when they get older to be a senior as a leader. Yeah. So I mentioned Gilly there earlier, just committed to TCU earlier, earlier this week or last week, whenever it was for a guy like him, you're, you know, you're a senior, he's a freshman. You guys are both going to play at that next level. Have you kind of, you know, showed him the ropes of playing high school baseball, kind of taking him underneath your wing? You know, what's your guys' relationship? Uh, Yeah, we have a good relationship. We talk every once in a while. I tried to take him under my wing. And then he also has a senior brother, which I feel like is a Grant Gilly. I feel like he's been a huge impact uh, just allowing Jackson Gilly to get to where he is now. So I feel like I have my talks with him or whatever, but really Grant Gilly, his brother, um, has been a huge impact in his life. And you just hear Grant talk about his brother and you just tell that he's just so happy for him. And he he loves p- putting in the work for his brother. You know, um, I feel like that's just, just been a huge part of Jackson's yeah. success in, the, in baseball. So you talk about how you're going into this week, you guys are facing Garen Catholic, Westfield as well. You know, as this season keeps on rolling, what are those expectations you have, you know, for the Sciensville team, but also for yourself personally, going through the rest of this regular season, going through sectional, regional, whatever, what are some of those expectations you guys have? Um, I'd say for right now, we just need to pick it up. We've been a little low, but I'm not worried about that. We did the same thing last year, but our, I'd say our expectation is to win state. I think we have. The pitching, the hitting, we have everything we need. We have the talent for sure to win state. Um, and I feel like we have good mindsets on our team. Um, you know, we all know that we have a chance. We have a chance to make it far in state. And then, especially with that competition, you know, if we can, if we can hang with some of these top teams, you know, it just sets us up so much better for uh, sectionals. Uh, regionals whatever it may be so going through and playing in northern indianapolis like we've talked about you're always facing mm-hmm. some of those teams best for you looking back at these past four years who is that best pitcher in indiana that you have faced take us through that ab who's that toughest guy Ooh. um honestly probably jack brown at fishers um i mean his fastball movement is insane and then he's got the curveball the change up i mean he's got everything and he commands his own and then what throws like 94. Um, he's a he's a bulldog on the mound. I'd say he's probably the best I've seen. I remember last year I struggled against him. I might have like four at bats and struck out like three times. Um, so I had a rough start against him. But I feel like this year, just seeing him over the last few years, I feel like you got to – once I saw his fastball a few times this year, I think I got a single or double off him or something. And then he got me the next step bat. But, I mean, he's just – he's one of those – you can't get much better than him. He's going to have a, a lot of success in the game. And – we have a great respect for him at Zionsville. So we talk about your toughest day being in the state of Indiana. For you playing for the Bulls, traveling across the country, do you remember maybe those top the top two or three pitchers that you face and what those ABs look like? 
Um, we faced this one kid. I don't remember his name. He's committed to Vandy from uh, Nashville. We faced him last year for a high school team, actually. And, I mean, I think he threw, like, 96 against us from the left side. And, I mean, <laughs> I couldn't hit that. Um, he was – He's the, I think he's going to get drafted this year. Um, but he's one of the top dudes I've seen with Zionsville. And then for the Bulls, um, um, let me think here. Uh, I'm missing someone. There's someone so good that I faced. Um, we faced this one dude in like 15 or 16 U. I think he's committed to Georgia. Uh, he played on Five Star National. And I just remember he was dicing us up. He was. He was like throwing like three, four slot left side and throwing low nineties at fifteen U, and he probably got me too. I mean, I don't even remember, but I just remember he was he was legit. Yeah, he was on five star, but he was he was a good player. Yeah. So for you being a senior, heading to that next level there at Winthrop this upcoming mm -hmm. summer, once this season comes to an end, let's kind of go ahead and dig through that recruiting process. Take us through, you know, when that recruiting process got started for you, when you started getting noticed by some Division One teams. What does that whole recruiting process kind of look like? Um, yeah, um, mine started pretty late. I'd say, I'd say, I think I had my first call about this time last year. So into my high school season, junior year. Um, and then it didn't like, it was just one or two calls like halfway through the summer. I was just like, what the heck? Like I was kind of like, all right, what's going on? But, and then there was one weekend. I remember, I think I had a really good weekend or whatever. And I shot a bunch of texts. And then from that weekend, it started to pick up. And then eventually I just got some D1 interest. Um, and I feel like just – I went to a Winthrop camp, and that was my biggest thing. That was the only camp I went to, but they were interested. You know, I was on the phone or whatever because one of their coaches knew Coach Hansen. So he told me about them. And then from that point forward, you know, I had a good camp and then got offered. And then next thing you know, I was committed. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so going through those initial conversations with Winthrop, with some of those other teams that were, you know, shooting you texts, shooting you calls throughout the summer – what do those initial conversations kind of look like? You know, what are those questions that they're asking you? And did you kind of see a difference when it came to maybe Division One teams like Winthrop compared to maybe some teams that weren't? Or was there a difference when it came to that? Or did the majority of the coaches kind of go about it the same way? Um, they A lot of them asked the same questions, you know, how's your season going? And then just wanted to get you get to know you as a person or whatever. But I'd say I know it's for D2, D3, whatever it may be. Um they were they were a lot faster of getting you on the visit. Like they watch you, they watch you, and they're like, "Hey, come next weekend or schedule a visit or whatever." I feel like with the D one coaches I talked to, it was a little slower. It was, "Hey, I'll see you this weekend. I'll talk to you. I'll see you again, and then we can schedule a visit." Um, I feel like that isn't probably normally how it is. I just felt like for my recruiting process, it was that way. Um, they just probably wanted to see me because I was I was just very late in everything with recruiting, so they just wanted to see me a lot more than I feel like other players. Um, cause they didn't, I feel like I, they didn't really know about me at the yeah. start. Um, so I feel like mine was just a little different than most people. And that's, yeah. Okay. So going, as you were going through that process, talking to Winthrop, talking to some of those other teams, you know, mm -hmm. what were some of those key things that you were looking for? You know, whether that's within the coaching staff, within the school, within the university in general, you know, what were some of those key things that you were looking for? Um, first for schooling, uh, I want to do exercise science and be a physical therapist. So I wanted to make sure they had one of the top programs in the country for that. So I wanted to go to a decent school um, and then just a good baseball reputation. And um, for Winthrop, for example, the weather was a huge factor. I think this morning I was wearing a sweatshirt and long sleeve. I'm like in May or whatever it is, April. Um, and Winthrop, you know, the weather is a huge part. And then the schooling and then just having a good relationship with the coaches. Um, I figured that was the biggest part about Winthrop. Um, I just, I felt like a connection with the coaches and as I stepped on campus, it's just like, this feels right. Um, I feel like other schools, I didn't get that, you know, I still love the school or whatever, but there's just some feeling when I went to Winthrop that I was like, I feel home here and just getting to know the coaches, getting to know me. And then I feel like the coaches already have a good relationship with my parents, which I feel like most schools wouldn't get that already. And so I feel like that was also a huge part of choosing Winthrop over other schools. Okay. Okay, so you go to Winthrop, you go to that camp. You know, mm -hmm. after that, how long does it take you to make that decision? Okay, I believe Winthrop is that place for me. And when that does come to mind, take us through when exactly it kind of hits you and, you know, how long that takes before you're actually, you know, notifying the coaches and, you know, maybe putting out a couple of social media posts. You know, just take us through that that whole ending process of the recruiting. 
Yeah. So I went to the camp, had a good camper. They're like, we'll reach out. And then it was probably a week later. They texted me. It was like, can we get on the phone or whatever? And then a few days later, they called me and they're like, we're, we want to offer you or whatever. So I called the assistant coach, the head coach, and they were just telling me how excited they were to offer me and hopefully I can join the team. And at that point, like I already talked to my parents if they were to offer me, if would I take it? We already had that conversation be like right after the camp. And I feel like I was kind of even before they even got on the phone and told me, hey, we're going to offer you. I was kind of just set, you know, me and my parents had that conversation and I was just like, it feels like home. So then I'd say like two or three days after I got the offer, I committed. And then a day or two later, I announced it. OK, so I remember back in January when we did the Battle of Indiana, um, you mm -hmm. said you're going you went on your official visit there to Winthrop. Take yep. us through what that official visit was like, you know, what you're liking about Winthrop so far, just going through and just seeing what the campus kind of looks like. Take us through that official visit and just, you know, some of the key things that you're you know really looking forward to as you get to Winthrop, you know, this summer and this upcoming fall. Uh, Yeah. So the official visit, that was great. Just getting to know everyone, I think. I mean, they're from all over the country. You have some kid from Canada, Florida, Virginia. And then Walker brought, I don't know if you know him, from Brownsburg, um, which was actually, that was that felt a little comforting for me, knowing I have someone I already know. I was on his team this summer, and he committed to Winthrop and just going to the official already knowing him. And then just building a relationship with the other kids, talking about high school, just talking about, you know, all the differences because we're all over the country. And then just – we uh we had dinner with the coaches, so that was nice, and then some players. So I got to meet some of the players, and I feel like that gave me comfort already knowing, hey, I know this guy, you know. Um, and then we got to hang out with them after, and that was just like, you know, I just I feel like going into college, you're always gonna be nervous, but going on the official visit, meeting all the recruits, the players, there's just a sense of comfort. Uh, for now on, I feel like like when I go in the spring or whatever or summer. It's just like it's home, and I know it, and I know people there, and that's just huge. Yeah. So going on an official visit, making relationships with guys who are mm -hmm. probably playing there now, playing with uh, making relationships with guys in your recruiting class. What mm -hmm. are some of those relationships beyond Walker, like you said, um, that you've built, and just some of those guys that you know you kind of know going into this upcoming summer? Yeah. Um, we got like a group chat going. We text in every once in a while just to keep everyone updated on our lives or whatever. And then, you know, I Snapchat some of the guys. Uh, so we talk on there every once in a while. And then just knowing, hey, but there's like five infielders in the recruiting class. So, you know, I got some competition. But, like, it's just nice knowing, you know, doing ground balls next year, I'm going to know five different guys, um, which I feel like five is a lot of infielders. But, you know, it's a lot of competition. But I feel like I just already know some people, so I'm going to be a lot more relaxed. Um, and then just – keeping in touch with everyone. You know, I was just texting one of them the other day talking about rooms or whatever it may be. And I feel like that's a huge part of just being, knowing the recruiting class, you know. So going into this summer, do you kind of know when exactly you're going to be heading to campus? I know generally when it comes to freshmen, they're generally heading to campus, you know, maybe a month, month or two before, you know, regular students and, you know, the, the returning baseball players get to campus. So like, what is that plan? Like, what does that kind of look like heading into the summer? Um, We don't, have to go early they mentioned they're like you can come a month or whatever early get some work in the weight room do some summer classes but this summer i'm going to play for the 18 new bulls we're going to do a few tournaments and i already had a team and they were just like yeah just stay with them you're going to get just as much reps in um so i feel like went up slow different you know usually they come in early but they know i'm working here so i think they were fine with me um staying playing with the bulls or whatever it may be so some of the freshmen might go up early, but I think if you have a summer team, you're getting that work in that they're fine with you staying at home. So I think I'm just going to go when everyone else goes. Okay. So the 18 new bowls, like where, where are some of the tournaments you guys are hitting this year? Maybe some of the other guys on your team, what does the 18 new bowls team look like? Um, It's all in Indiana, actually. It's just going to be relaxed. I think Friday, Saturday, Sunday tournament, just having a fun time. Um, And it's a bunch of, let's see, I got Max Bond, from my team last year, Griffin Shabel. Um, and then I got – there's some dudes from the Canes that are coming over to the Bulls this summer, like Kevin Reed, uh, um, I think Luke McDonald, just a bunch of the – it's kind of the Canes Midwest. They're coming to the Bulls. And then some of the Bulls guys from last year, Bryce Riggs will be there. So it'll be a talented group. It'll be fun to play with yeah, them this summer. I'm sure. So as we kind of talked about relationships with some guys that you're going to be heading to Winthrop with, let's talk about that coaching staff. I know you said the Winthrop coaching staff has a good relationship with your parents. But mm -hmm. what is that relationship you have with them and how has that kind of evolved since you've committed, gone on that official visit and probably, you know, been staying in contact with them throughout the season? What does that relationship with your future coaching staff kind of look like? 
Uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, originally, the recruiting coordinator was Jared Broughton, and I was really tight with him, and then he left to do some other baseball job. But now they have a new recruiting coordinator, and we've talked a few times and texted, and I feel like originally I wasn't very happy that he left. But, like, now knowing the new recruiting coordinator, I know that he's 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 the right guy for the job. Um, and he, he me and him have a good relationship now. And then Coach Reganos, the head coach, um, I've always loved him just from when I stepped on campus. Just a great guy, uh, a lot of energy. So uh, we've had a few calls, great great uh, guy to talk to. And then I actually have a pretty good relationship with the pitching coach, even though I don't uh, pitch. I feel like uh, like the dinner or whatever, he was at my table with my family. So that was nice to just get to know. I feel like I know all the coaches. And then, you know, just get in deep combos. And that's how my de- – part of it was my dad figured out him and the pitching coach already knew each other, and it was just – I feel like there's just a connection with my family and all the coaches. Okay. So you say that there's five infielders in your recruiting class with you being a third baseman, or at least that's what PBR says on on their Mm -hmm. website. Is that where you plan on sticking or do you kind of see yourself maybe moving around the infield? What is that plan as you head to that next level? Um, I honestly have no clue where I'll play, but like this high school season, I'm playing second base. Last high school season, I played first base in the summer. I played third base. Uh, So I kind of just can play wherever they want me to. I feel like, Originally, I was playing first base just because I had some arm issues, but I feel like now my arm is starting to pick up. So I feel like by next year, I'll definitely be able to, you know, play third base comfortably. I feel like I could right now, but we have a good third baseman who stays there. Um, but I just feel like they can put me anywhere in the infield and I can make yeah. some plays for them. Okay, so you going from second base to third base, potentially even, you know, occasionally playing first base as well. Mm-hmm. You have a mindset difference at all when you like you're looking at the lineup. Okay, I'm playing third base today. Maybe next day you're playing second base. Is there a mindset difference when you're playing different positions, or what exactly is going through your mind? At, you know, at that point, um, I feel like usually I'm on the right or this this year I've been on the right side of the field. So switching over to third base, it's kind of you got to get some reps. I feel like just to see the field from that side of the field, but really there's no mindset difference. I mean, third base you got to get lower. You know, they hit some rockets at you, but other than that just seeing the field from the other side. I mean, it. same thing, field the ball, throw the ball, you know. So flipping that around from the defensive side of things to the offensive side of things, kind of take us through your hitting approach. Let's say, you know, you're walking up to that batter's box. What's going through your mind? What are you trying to do with each at bat? Kind of take us through that hitting approach. Um, stepping into the box, it's just like, this guy can't beat me. We, we've talked about that a lot with our team and our coaches this year. Don't let that guy beat you. Have a winning mentality. So I feel like that's been big with my uh, mentality this year compared to last year. Last year was a little rough, but I feel like that's just been my biggest switch in my at bats. And then, you know, oh count, you're just looking to hit your pitch. And then if it gets, if I get down two strikes, uh, I change up my stance a little bit, get a little wider, and then choke up on the bat. And I feel like that's helped a lot this year. Still chasing too many pitches sometimes, but I feel like there's just there's been a little switch in my mindset, and I just really focusing on that two strike approach this year. And they're just hitting some barrels, you know, trying to drive into the gaps. Don't try to do too much and it'll fall. Yeah. I feel like so you, that's the biggest difference from this year, to last year. So you said your mindset kind of changed from junior year to senior year. If you <laughs> had to go through mechanics, how have those maybe evolved? Just take us through, you know, that load up to that follow through. What exactly those mechanics kind of look like and how maybe those have evolved over time? Okay. Um, yeah. So last year, I feel like first with my hands, I started them a little higher. And now I lowered them kind of on my chest. And I feel like, that's just been it's just more comfortable and I feel like I can get a rhythm going with that you know having to move my hands a little more and I feel like that's one of the things where I feel like I also get bat speed from it so I'm just constantly in motion and then this winter I really worked on with my hands obviously and then just getting into my back hip originally I was just very upright I'd say and I wasn't getting into my hips and then this year I've been trying to and I feel like that's generated a lot more power and then just allowed me to Hit some, hit some more barrels with some more exit velo this year. Okay. All right. So if you were a scout watching your game, so this can be on the field when you're playing third, second, maybe even first base as well, when you're in the batter's box, when you're on, when you're running bases as well, if you were a scout watching your game, what would be that personal scouting report you'd write up on yourself? Um, First, for the hitting, I'd say I get a lot of barrels. I drive the gaps. I can spray anywhere in the field. Um, Maybe I strike out too much, but – I feel like the biggest thing with me is I can go anywhere. You pitch me outside, I'll go up, whatever it may be. And then I feel like this year, a big part of adding my game is stealing in my running. Um, I feel like that's been a thing that has really improved my game. If I get on first, I'm going to try and steal second. Um, 
I feel like that's a big thing that scouts would look at in me. And then for the fielding, I'd say they think I'm smooth. You know, I can make the routine plays, and then I just got to improve my – ever since my arm injury, I feel like my arm's been a little – one of my low – my lows, and I feel like that's the thing I got to improve on, but it's definitely improved over the last few months. Okay. So you talk about maybe that you – maybe maybe you do strike out a little too much. Maybe your mm-hmm. arm isn't as strong as what it used to be just from the injury. If yeah. you had to focus on your development and just some of the biggest things you're wanting to work on before you head to Winthrop or, you know, before you get to being a sophomore, junior there as well, heading into these next couple of years, what are some of the biggest things you're wanting to put into your development? Where, like, some of those key emphasis coming in at? Um, definitely my arm strength. I feel like it's obviously gotten a lot better, but there's just so much to improve. Especially if I want to – if they need to play me – play me at third in college um i need to be able to you know sling it over there and then i still like i've been stealing a lot more bags but i feel like that's one thing where i'm i'm like good i can i can be great at that um just the improvement over the last few years with my speed i feel like that's one thing where if i'm running i think i ran a six nine which is decent but i need to get down to like a six 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 seven if i want to be able to steal a bunch of bags in college with the elite catching i'd say those are the two things Okay. So with where you're at within your baseball career right now, you know, being a senior, playing for the mm-hmm. Bulls, you know, the best organization in the Midwest for you know your entire career, going to Winthrop, a good baseball school. For you, I'm sure you've had a bunch of influential people within your career, with your dad, your uncle, this and that. But if you had to choose two to three people who have been the most influential, who would those people be and what would be the reasonings for them being so influential? Well, first, obviously, my dad, my mom, um, just always being there for me, you know, getting me food my dad bring me out to the cages even if I don't want to he's pushed me uh to be the best baseball player I can be and the best person and my mom just she's always there for me whether I'm doing good I'm doing great I always have my mom to talk to and then I'd say um my uncle obviously all the family members um he just you know we had a, we've had a rough stretch you know he'll call me in the office what should we do better he's always he's I'm like his little coach too um I feel like that's just helped me learn the game. I feel like that's one of my best things, too, is just my baseball IQ. And I feel like just from talking to my parents and my uncle and all that, uh, they're just always there helping me as a person and as a baseball player. And then I'd say Marcus Fredwell. Um, Freddie, um, he's he's helped with the Bulls. He's announcing for Zionsville right now. Um, he's someone I can always talk to. You know, last year I was going through a rough stretch, and I get on the phone with him and talk. Um, and he was just always there for my mindset. Um, he'd get me out of the dumps. And then um, I just feel like he's just a funny guy. You know, if you're just in a bad mood, you can always talk to Freddie. He can perk you up. And, yeah, I'd say those three are you know, my biggest biggest influences. Okay. All right. So I got one last segment here for you. I call it rapid yeah. fire, but really it's just more digging into the personal side of things. First okay. off with passion. So beyond the game of baseball, let's say you're trying to get your mind off of things or, you know, maybe cope with some stress, whatever happens to be, what are some of those passions that you have beyond the game of baseball? Um, I like to lift. Um, it's pretty Josh Gervin, Simon Wilkinson, Ash Wagner, Tiny Hill. We all like to go to the Nash's house and, Get some big muscles. Uh, that's one thing I love. Um, I like golfing. I was just golfing yesterday after practice, actually. Um, it's just, you know, some peace. Um, um, even though I suck at it. Um, let's see, what else is there? I like playing video games. I like playing MLB The Show. I'll probably play that tonight. Um, at just if you got nothing to do, you can always just chill and rest your body and play some video games. And that's definitely what I'm going to do in college. I'm going to be always, I'm always going to be on it. It will be The Show. Okay. All right. So I take you're you're a PlayStation guy, right? But we're playing the yeah. show. All right. Yeah. What, what's your favorite mode? Franchise, road to the show, Diamond Dynasty? Um, definitely Diamond Dynasty. Okay. I love playing Diamond Dynasty. I haven't played it much for 2023, but I got like nothing to do today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grind it out today. Okay. All right. What what so when you aren't playing Diamond Dynasty, let's say franchise or whatever, you know, what's your go-to uh, team? Like if you had if you had to play if you had to play someone one on one without Diamond Dynasty, what's that go to team? Even though they're not very good, I got to go with the Reds. They're my favorite team. Um, that's the team I've always grown up watching. So you got to you gotta represent them when I'm playing some of the show. Okay. All right. So you also talk about weightlifting. I know Simon and some of those other Zionsville kid guys are really big when it comes to like Andy Batochka. Are you yep. one of these guys as well? Or what exactly does your, your workout plan kind of look like? Uh, yeah, I do the I do lifting with him with Evolve or whatever. Um, he's been a huge part. Um, I feel like that's one thing with my power this year. 
that I didn't used to have. I was probably lifting wrong. I was just lifting however I wanted to. And now getting on his program, I, I've seen a huge difference in my strength and my speed. So I feel like he's been a huge part in not only my game, but everyone doing him. You can just tell because he has a bunch of uh, people he's got a program or whatever. And I feel like he's just – he's a great trainer. Yeah, I'm always scrolling through Instagram and see those videos of, like, people evolving. I'm like, holy yep. really shit. Like, that guy yeah. used to be small. Now he's big. And uh, now yep. hitting all these home runs or whatever. I mean, I always see Andy Post and whoever it is just always scrolling through. But when it comes to motivations, you know, kind of what is it just deep down internally that kind of, you know, helps you wake up in the morning, helps you go get better, continuously evolve as a ball player, but also as a person as well? Just what are some of those just internal motivations that you have? Uh, yeah, definitely just wake up every morning and be blessed to be up that day and just know, uh, you know, not, not very many people are fortunate like I am to be able to play this game four more years and just have a great high school team around me and be able to just play at an elite level. And I feel like that's my motivation in baseball is I have this huge benefit of being able to be, you know, just playing at a high level and I got to use it to my advantage and put that extra work in and just keep grow in my game because not very many people are going to be able to play as long as I am. And then just uh, my dad played in college. So I just want to, I could, I just want to be like him, play at the next level and then be around baseball the rest of my life. Okay. So taking that motivation question, just one step further, perfect picture of your life in 20 years from now, you'll be up, you know, later thirties, 37, 38 years old, whatever. Well, everything's going right for you. What is that perfect picture of your life in 20 years? All right. Um, First, I want to, if a perfect picture, I'm living on a lake house down south when it's warm. I want to have a boat, you know, go to and go jet skiing. Um, and honestly, either coaching in college, I've thought about that. Like, I'm just, I don't really know if I want to do that or if I want to be a physical therapist. But I think, I think being a physical therapist for like a high end baseball team or just any college team, pro team, that'd be fun. Just be around the top athletes in the country. And that'd be awesome. Or just, again, just a high end college coach recruiting some of the top players in the country you know coaching against the top programs that'd be that'd be living the life okay all right so i got two final questions here for you i'll just ask them back to back question okay. number one what is that go-to playlist let's say you're you know let's say you're making that drive down the winthrop this summer what are you listening to just take us through you know what that go-to playlist is genre singer who have whatever it is and then last question dream nil brand when you get to winthrop you know have that opportunity to capitalize on your nil what is that dream brand to collaborate, endorse, partner with, whatever? What would be that dream brand? Um, for the music, uh, I like Baby Keem. Uh, so I'll be listening to a lot of him and some Don, Don Tolliver. Um, I like him. And then you can never go wrong with like Drake or all the, all the, all the, all the other guys. So I got playoffs with a bunch of those people. And then for NIL, um, like Chipotle or something like I mean, I'm at Chipotle all the time, um, you know, get a, some free food or something from them. That'd be awesome. You know, um, I feel like that's also one of the things, honestly, like Chipotle has helped me gain so much weight. Or like if I got an NIL from them, that'd, be, that'd just be that'd be next level. That'd be awesome. All right, man. Well, that's the last question I got for you. You know, really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, as you go through the rest of this spring, you go through this summer with your last season with the Bulls and go down the Winthrop, you know, best of luck with your career, man. You know, I'll definitely be following you, especially with you being an Indiana guy, kind of seeing where you go there. So, you know, just best of luck the rest of your career. Uh, but like I said, just, just thanks for coming on the show. You know, I, I do really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me up on the show.